Hi, this is uh, Mr. Schneider. Uh, I, I don't know why, but I, I've been, I guess I'm still on spring break. Uh, I've been behind on my podcast. So instead of doing an individual podcast for each part of this unit, I'm just going to do a quick podcast review. You know, we've been doing that differentiation in class. Hopefully that's helped you with this unit. I'm going to look at each uh, different section. There's four of them. Talk about them, and then uh, we'll see if there's any uh, questions in class tomorrow. Um, so let's talk with types of business ownership. First time is a proprietorship. Remember, this is one owner who takes all the risks, but also gets all the profits. Um, some of the advantages of this are if you know if you're someone who likes to make all sorts of decisions, you don't like to listen to other people. This would be a good type of business for you. Uh, a lot of times, these are like uh, trades like Jack's Plumbing or uh, uh, Joe's Bakery, things like that. Um, again, you know, you take all the risk, you put all the capital, but you get to keep all the profit. This doesn't mean you don't have any workers, this means you're the sole boss. The next thing we have is a partnership. This is when there's two or more bosses. Uh, you share the risk, but you also share all the profits. Um, if you don't have enough money to start it, you and your partner want to do something together, it's a good type of business to start. Um, a lot of times these are like law firms. I have Ernst & Young, that's the type, that's an accounting firm. Um, some of the difficulties with part, oh, let me go back for one second, I'm sorry. One of the difficulties with a proprietorship, if you're such the sort, if you're the sort of boss where like, you control everything, and then you were to pass away, uh, your partnerships, the proprietor business is probably gonna die, is probably gonna die with you. In partnerships, some of the difficulties you might face, you know, a lot of times people form partnerships with their significant others or their spouses. Uh, like if you get divorced or, you know, separated or whatever, uh, you can hurt the partnership. If you get into a fight with the person you started the partnership with, the uh, partnership can go away. Last type is a corporation. Uh, this is a form of business organization. Uh, it acts as a uh, person. There's numerous owners, and a lot of times to raise money, corporations sell stock. So you can purchase uh, stock in a company or considered an owner. Usually there's a board of directors that runs the company. For example, if you own stock in uh, Microsoft, they're not uh, sending all the individual people that own stock, asking them for information about what the company should do next. Um, good thing about this type of company is if the person who uh, started the company passes away, uh, it's going to continue. Uh, the examples I always use are uh, Ray Kroc, who franchised McDonald's. Uh, when he passed away in the 80s, McDonald's obviously continued. And uh, Sam Walton, uh, who started um, Walmart when he passed away in the 90s, Walmart continued. And then the last thing we looked at was an entrepreneur. Uh, this is a person who takes the risk to produce goods and services. Um, uh, examples I always use are H.J. Hines. He didn't invent ketchup, but he did start Hines Corporation. Um, and these businesses, may, uh, we talked some of the students in class, their parents were entrepreneurs or their they own their own companies and stuff. Um, so those are different types of business ownership. Okay, so let's look now at... That's not what I want to look at. Yeah, let's do circular flow. Okay. Circular flow is... Um, how resources and supplies and goods, how they move about the different, or how they move about our free market. Um, specifically, we're talking about three types of things, individuals, businesses, and the government. Um, individuals, uh, through saving and investing, provide financial capital that businesses borrow to expand and increase consumption. All households own resources, and the resource we talked about that everybody, every household has is human resources. Um, when you start a job, what you're really doing is you're selling yourself to that company. You're a resource. This, the company's saying, we'll give you this X amount of money, salary, for that resource. Um, and then the money that I get, or the money that people get for selling that resource, they use to purchase products purchase products from companies that make products. Businesses, producers, buy resources like we just talked about. And uh, they make products that are sold and they use that property, they use that profits to buy more resources. So when I go to Best Buy and I buy a television, um, they use that money to buy more resources, including more stuff to sell and more people to work in their stores. 
and then the government taxes businesses, they tax the profits the business makes, and they tax the salary that I make, and they use that to pr provide public goods and services. Uh, public goods and services including, sorry I had to turn the lights back on, uh, including things like roads and schools. Okay. All right, so let's move now to, let's do financial institutions. Yeah, let's watch this slideshow from the beginning. All right, um, so what, what these do is they work, they, you save money, they take that money and they lend it to borrowers. That's how they make money. Uh, there's a number of different types. There's a bank, uh, it's a business that keeps and lends money. Savings and loans, which are mostly dealing with uh, savings accounts and lending money for people to buy houses. Credit unions, if you remember, I showed you the example of Apple Federal Credit Union, where I belong to. It's usually started by a bank. Um, I'm sorry, it's usually started by a business or a labor union. So obviously Apple is a teacher, mostly educators belonging to that. Um, and then security brokerages, which work mainly in buying and selling stock. And we talked about you owning stock. And don't forget the story I told you about my father. 300 bucks when he was 11 years old, sold that stock for $15,000 to buy my mother a car when he was 65. So financial institutions are received deposits and, and they make loans. Uh, they earn profits when borrowers pay interest on loans. And we talked about everybody will take out loans sometime in their life. You don't have the money laying around to buy a house or a car. Some of you within the next five, six years are gonna, probably gonna borrow money to go to college. Uh, and they encourage savings by paying interest on deposits. Remember we talked about interest rates are very low right now. That help to when you're borrowing money because it means you have to pay back less. But it hurts you when you're saving money because it means you get less of a return on your savings. All right. And then the last one is global economy. Let's go ahead and view that slideshow from the beginning. All right. Uh, we pursue, Virginia U.S. pursue international trade in order to increase wealth. Uh, so our global economy. Uh, it's worldwide markets which the buying and selling of goods take place. Um, all nations to some extent, well, the vast majority of nations to some extent are involved in global market, global trading. So why do we trade? To, engage, to obtain goods and services that cannot produce or produce efficiently themselves. Uh, like We don't produce coffee beans. We get coffee beans mainly from South America. Why? We really can't produce those in the United States. To buy goods or services at a lower cost or lower opportunity cost. Uh, you know, we looked at our shirt tags and class, see where these things are made. Um, a lot of these goods are made overseas because companies, it costs them less to produce those goods. They make more of a profit when they're produced overseas. I'm sure companies would love to make things in the United States, but they make them overseas for a variety of reasons. Um, because they make more money producing them overseas and shipping them back over here. Um, we're also involved in global trade because we want to sell goods and services to other countries. And uh, we want to be involved in global trade to create jobs. You know, we want to make, create jobs. We, we make goods, companies make goods, sell them globally so they can create jobs here in the United States. Uh, we specialize in the production of certain goods and services that promote efficiency and growth. And in technology, uh, you know, here's a, I wonder how many of how many of you in eighth grade uh, look at a newspaper every day. And even the, the, this cartoon's uh, dated because it's a CD-ROM drive on it. Um, but innovations, technology contribute to the global flow of information, capital, goods, and services. And uh, you know, talking about information, um, you know, I always talk about events in my life, and I, I talked about how when I found out about President Reagan being shot, I was on the school bus, and somebody had transistor radio, and I think about. Uh, September 11th, um, one of my coworkers logged into a computer to check the news, and there, there was a story there we found out using the internet. Uh, I think CNN.com, and then uh, I think about when Bin Laden was killed. I was uh, laying in bed uh, looking at Twitter, and there was uh, tweets about it like an hour and a half before the president went on to uh, announce that it had happened. So you know, information, things are flow. Uh, Think about ordering a product from overseas, how easy that is to you now. Things are just the way that uh, technology has opened up the world. Uh, it's quite incredible. And there's an example, you know, the internet. Um, 
And then the use of technology also is lowers the cost of production. If you look at here, it's an assembly line, uh, back uh, Ford assembly line, and you'll notice there's no workers. But that's how they would have put that car together. Nowadays, it's done mostly with robots. And then uh, things change over time. Uh, there's an example of kids 50 or 60 years ago on uh, listening. Um, entertainment's obviously changed. You know, I was tall, telling the one class, I remember when I got cable TV and we had 36 channels. No remote, but we had 36 channels. We thought how awesome that was. Um, life's not the same as it, it's not the same as it is today. Some pe I, I think it's changed for better. Um, and that's because things change over time. Technology changes our houses. Think about even in the last five, ten years. How many people don't have home phone lines, don't have landlines in their houses anymore? Um, wireless internet in your house. Think it, it's incredible. And you think, think, imagine what it's going to be like 20 years from now, 10 years from now for you. How your household's going to be different. Uh, leisure activities. Um, you know, a lot of kids playing video games. While video games have been along, around for a while, uh, totally different. Alicia Williams. And uh, our workplaces have changed. I mean, how many people work from home now? They telecommute. All right, that's all I got today. Um, again, that's a review of Unit 7. Um, hope everyone uh, has a good day. Thanks, guys.